All right, hello everyone and welcome back to Cutabo Space Program, where today we are having a look at another fun mod, this time in the form of Sounding Rockets, once again by Rover Dude. I gotta say, man, I love Rover Dude. He just keeps popping out amazing and cool mods, and this one I am quite interested in because as a geophysicist, as my day job, I've actually worked with a sounding rocket before, and so seeing this in-game makes me very happy. So if we go into the VAB, we'll take a look at the parts that this adds into the game. Now, they're nothing really too special because, well, it, they are sounding rockets. They're meant to be cheap, basic rockets to send up quick little experiments that go up and then back down again. The whole point of sounding rockets in real life is to take a scientific payload on a short suborbital flight. Uh, most of them, I think, only go up to like uh, maybe 7,500 kilometers or so. And uh, in the mod for this, uh, the parts that it adds in is a sounding rocket nose cone that has a built-in parachute, gyro, and of course the control module for the craft. And as you can see for the cost on this thing, it's only 50, because again, it's meant to be a cheap option for basic science to uh, send up into the atmosphere or low orbital flights, it's, or suborbital rather. And uh, yeah, so it's a basic command module. Rather than electrical charge, as you can see on here, we have something called stored charge, and that's meant to be there. Uh, that is basically the full charge for the craft that cannot be recharge so you can't slap a solar uh, panel onto this thing to make it go for longer once this nose cone runs out of power that's it as again sounding rockets are meant for quick short little experiments uh, they go up they go down and that's it and uh, the parachute in here is quite interesting if we actually pop it on here as you can see on the information it's a drag of 0.22 when stowed semi deployed 25 drag fully deployed 150 drag deployment out of 1,000 and minimum air pressure of 0 0.007, but that can be changed. If we right-click this, we can actually adjust the uh, altitude at where the parachute will actually uh, de fully deploy to get all the drag. And now the default's at 1,000, but you can change it for to uh, anything from 5,000. Uh, down to about 50. That probably wouldn't be <laughs> recommended, though, as you'll probably hit the ground too quickly. Probably wouldn't give you enough drag to land safely. Uh, but yeah, I like that it is adjustable. That's kind of cool. And you can even uh, adjust the minimum pressure as well, although it's, it's at a bare minimum essentially, and you can bring it up to a 0.5 on the minimum pressure as the max there, and uh, that's quite nice. I, I like that you can change the parachute options there. I'll probably never do such a thing, but it's a good fun option to have nonetheless if you're, uh, perhaps you take a sounding rocket with you to another planet to then launch off for experiments. That's always a possibility. You can adjust those on the nose cone to uh, suit your needs. Now that's all we have in the command section. If we head over to propulsion, we have three lovely engines. The first is the SRM XL sounding rocket motor. And as the description says, it's a cardboard tube stuffed with explosion explosives. What could possibly go wrong? Ah, uh, in Kerbal Space Program, everything. Everything can go wrong. And all three of these sounding rockets that it adds in here, they are all solid rocket boosters. So once they're on, they cannot be turned off and there's no thrust uh, control. You just pop them on and launch them. Now, of course, you can uh, set the thrust limiter to give yourself a little bit of control before launch, but once you do launch, that's it. And uh, on this first one, it's essentially the most powerful of them. It's got a lot of thrust, but it's not going to last too long. Uh, the second one, the SRML, has less thrust, but will last a bit longer, essentially. And as it says in the description here, it's good for a first stage uh, with relatively strong thrust at the expense of ISP. And the last one is low thrust, high ISP, good for a sort of final stage to this. And uh, one thing you'll notice is that these rockets are all quite small. In fact, they are 0.35 meters. Uh, so, they are not really meant to be used with decouplers. In fact, they just fall off 
once they've run out of fuel. That is it. So you basically launch the engine. Uh, once it's out of fuel, it just drops right off the back end of your rocket, and then you ignite the second stage. Uh, so no decouplers needed. And uh, yeah, that's the three engines that it adds in. Uh, nothing in control. In structural, though, we do have the launch stick found lying by the side of the road, a stick you can use to prop things up. And uh, yeah, it's basically what it says. It's a stick. You uh, clip it on there, and uh, it basically is meant to just fall away. Uh, it doesn't... Let's see here. On the oh, crash tolerance, 12 meters per second. So this thing is basically designed that once you actually launch your rocket, it just falls away. And uh, you can use it to basically, uh, you know, take your sounding rocket, put it on its side or at an angle of some sort, pop a stick on the other side to prop it up with, and then launch it off at that angle. That's the intent, and the stick just simply falls away. It's quite an interesting little uh, addition there, since, well, there's really no point of having one of these babies on there for a sounding rocket. That's pretty much just overkill and uh, yeah that's it's a, it's a fun little thing it, I, I like the idea of it it's just a low-tech option now in aerodynamics we do have a couple of fins we have a large fin a medium fin and a small fin and well that is pretty much the only difference between them all now of course the large fin does have a higher lift rating the small fin has the lowest lift rating and they all do have different mass but besides that, they're just fins. You just slap them on the side of this thing to uh, make sure your sounding rocket keeps going straight. And there are the three sizes in comparison. The large one's odd. It's basically just a big blue square. I'm, I'm not too fond of that one. I do like the medium and the small, though. They do look like nice, cool little fins quite cool and usable and lovely to help keep your rocket going the direction you want. Utility, we have nothing in there added, but finally, as the point of a sounding rocket is for scientific missions, we have four different scientific packages that you can strap onto the back of your rocket. So if we just grab, uh, ooh, we should probably just pop all of those off real quick. Grab a new nose cone, there we go. So it's now all nice and straight. And uh, yeah, there we are, a nice little tiny scientific package there. This one being meteoro- bleh, cannot talk there. Meteorological, there we go. Now this one also says meteorological, but it is in fact an aerono aeronautics one basically. It says aeronomy, which is a Word I don't hear too often. Aeronautics, I guess, would probably be the better way to say it. Uh, then we have a material science one, which also is called meteorological. And then finally, one that isn't named meteorological is, in fact, a survey uh, or an engineering survey package, rather. So we have four separate experiments to gather you a bit of science. And that that is kind of the point of this whole mod. Remember, sounding rockets, they go up, they go down, they collect science along the way. And uh, these sounding rockets are meant to be cheap, low cost, low tech solutions for gathering science early in your career mode. In fact, in a career mode save, all of these sounding rocket parts will come with it. They are a tier one tech, essentially. So all of the parts for making sounding rockets are you start off in career mode with, and you can launch these babies out to help grind out your initial science. And like I said, because they are so small and so cheap, they could also potentially be used as uh, portable probes to take with you to other planets. You can land on Duna, launch off a couple of sounding rockets, and collect the science from those. Could be quite interesting indeed. Now this, uh, it's really all there is to the sounding rockets, honestly. I built a quick, just small little one here which I'm now thinking about, and I forgot to actually put some fins on this thing, so let's pop on some of them mm, small rocket fins, and there we go. Oh, no, hold on, I gotta do it with that way, and... Ooh, they are a little wonky because I did build this thing at an angle. Oh, that's probably not gonna be good for me. Let's try and straighten those out. 
There we go. That looks straight enough. And yeah, it's a basic, simple little sounding rocket. It's got the large sounding rocket motor, the engineering survey package, and just the nose cone set to the defaults. And we've got a couple of those uh, sticks on there. <laughs> Which I just love that that is a thing for this. Uh, again, low-tech option for gathering science. So let's head out to the launch pad here. And as you can see, the sticks are propping us up. And that one almost came off just from loading the craft. That, uh, that basically shows you that these things are just designed to fall off straight away when you launch. And uh, yeah, uh, basic, simple little craft here. Uh, let's uh, turn on the SAS, even though it... It really doesn't have it. Uh, the, these things you do kind of have to control yourself a bit or else they go really wonky really quickly. And yeah, let's just launch this thing off in three, two, one. There we go, the sticks have fallen away and we are flying fairly straight, though rotating oddly. And yeah, this rocket getting a pretty good thrust out of us. We're at ooh, three, almost 400 meters per second. And... There we go, that rocket should have fallen away if we release the parachute. There it goes, it just drops right off. If you launch upwards, it'll just fall back down to the planet. But since, of course, we were traveling at an angle, it kind of came with us for a bit. Oh yes, I forgot to collect the science, even though I'm on a sandbox game, so we don't actually get science, but there we are. We performed a series of tests on experimental rocket components. Excellent, we'll keep that data and just float back on down to the uh, ocean there, nice and gently. And uh, one of the things I should mention about these survey packages, the sounding rockets are really only designed to hold one. As you can see, this parachute isn't exactly large. So uh, if you try and put on any more than one of these survey packages, the parachute will basically not be functional. It won't have enough drag to slow it down, and it'll just fall back down to the planet's surface and uh, plummet to its doom, which wouldn't be good. And uh, like I said, on that stored charge, that short flight, we've gone down 0 .2324 to 5 of our stored charge, and again, that cannot be replenished. So you have one shot at that in just a couple short seconds of a flight brought us down to almost by eh, a you know, small percentage of that. Oh, oh no, it's at 8.5. I was thinking it was 9. Oh, I can read today. I should get my eyes checked. So yeah, about 1.5 now almost of the stored charge before we splash down here in the ocean. There we go. And we have collected glorious science not too far away from the Kerbal Space Center. And uh, yeah, that's well, sort of the point of a sounding rocket. You send it up, collect the science, it comes back down, and you're good to go. So uh, yeah, if you would like to check this out for yourself, you can take a look at the uh, link in the description. It's, it's a basic mod, it's a low-tech mod, but it adds something that I love. I've always been fascinated by sounding rockets, and as I said, I've worked on one before, so being able to have them in the game just makes me happy. And uh, yeah, once again, it's uh, the Sounding Rocket mod by Rover Dude. And yeah, give it a try, have some fun. For when the new point .9 update to the game comes out, I'm thinking this will be very useful because of course you're gonna have to start a new career save. This will help you grind out some more science. Because again, it's a tier one tech on the career tree. You start with these already. So good times, I hope you have enjoyed this episode and that you uh, come back for the next when we'll be looking at hopefully another fun, cool mod. But until then, thank you for watching, my friends, and as always, have a good one.